Patrick, and the floor is yours. Go ahead. Thank you very much, William. And uh, a very warm welcome to all the attendees from the Asia and Oceania regions. Uh, my name is Patrick Osborne, and I'll be going through the Squash 57 rule changes, and the details of these are in the next year C. Uh, but before I do that, and before I go into those proposed rule changes, we thought that I should explain what Squash 57 actually is. So at a high level, Squash 57 is a version of Squash that started about 35 years ago. And there are two very obvious rule differences when you see Squash 57 being played. One is that you bounce the ball before serving. And the second is when you play doubles, and we play a lot of Squash 57 doubles, is we play alternate shots. From an equipment standpoint, Squash 57 uses the American racquetball racket. This racket is about 20% shorter than a squash racket, which is about a grip's length, and it has a larger head. And the graphic you have on the slide on the top right-hand side is drawn to scale for the rackets. It is important to note that this exact same racket is also used by a third sport, Australian racquetball. There are two ball types. We have the black and the blue. So the black put into the double dot and the blue to the single dot, if you're talking squash. And it's 57 uh, millimeters in diameter. So it's a larger ball than the squash ball. And it's about twice as bouncy. So the, the bouncing ball graphic, which is also on the slide, is drawn to scale and shows that the black squash 57 ball is about twice as bouncy as the double dot squash ball and the blue similarly for the single dot. Squash 57 is truly a lifetime sport. It uses the larger bouncier ball, so it's not technically demanding and is easy to start for all ages and abilities. And it is less physically demanding than squash and potentially extends on court careers by decades. It is a hard to stop to playing this game. And for these two lifetime sport reasons, it has significant and as yet largely unrealized revenue potential. I'm now going to go on to the proposed rule changes um, and included in these uh, changes, which are largely cosmetic, removing ambiguities. There are three that will facilitate the development of squash. The first is around the duties of the marker, and I would like to thank Ken Chi for all his work that he's done in this, uh, in this effort. Uh, he's based in Malaysia, and I can see we have two people online from Malaysia. This is a rule clarity change that has been requested by a, a player feedback. And we would like to change the rules to clearly state that the marker remains silent when the server serves their first serve. This is because the receiver has the choice as to whether they're gonna play that first serve or not. So if the serve is a poor one, the receiver can take advantage of that. And the marker does not need to intervene. The second change I want to go through is about the racket specification. And I see this as a correction to our rules. Squash 57, as I've said, uses the American racquetball racket, but the Squash 57 racket specification has diverged from the racquetball racket specification. We've even truncated the maximum length of the racket when we converted the specification from inches to millimeters. This will have effectively accidentally outlawed many rackets. The proposal is that we realign with the American specification. The third rule I'd like to go through uh, is the ball specification change, which we see as an upgrade to our rules. Unlike tennis or squash, squash 57 balls do not bounce consistently. If I have two black squash 57 balls and I bounce them on the ground, I would hope that they would bounce to the same height, but they don't. Depending on the manufacturer, they might be like this or like this. And if I was to throw in a blue ball, you would hope they would be like this, but they could be like this. So from a player standpoint, this does not work. Our current ball specifications have not been fit for purpose. And we are now in the trial phase of upgrading the rebound resilience specifications. Unfortunately, we are behind schedule with this because of COVID um, and that has delayed the manufacturing processes, but we are making progress. We propose that the next version of the Squash 57, of the squash 57 rules to be published includes the upgraded ball specifications once they've been agreed. 
I would like to hand back to uh, the moderators for any questions that you may have. Thank you, Patrick. Uh, it looks a bit technical for people who are not familiar with Squash 57, but uh, I think it's a very important discipline within the World Squash Federation. Some countries uh, within the attendees are quite familiar with Squash 57, some are not, but I think it's our role to ensure that the entire family can present the motions and we can develop all our discipline and Squash 57 has got a, got a great opportunity uh, ahead with the right amendment that you just uh, proposed, Patrick. Thank you very much for bouncing between the balls, between the black and the blue. <laughs> and by chance, we did have the racket, the American racket size, but uh, for the AGM for sure. Thank you anyway. And nice cap, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I think there is a question. Salamani? Yeah. I'm going to allow you to talk. You should be able to talk. Yes, please. Um, I have a question uh, with regards to the service. Uh, this may not be the forum to do it, but I'd like to just propose that in future we try and get the rules as close to the existing game of squash. Um, makes it easier for everyone. Therefore, instead of two services, could we not do just with one serve as we practice in the game of squash? In Malaysia, uh, for squash 57, we just use one serve. Um, yes, I was aware of this. Thank you for the, uh, the I guess, uh, information and, and your opinion on this. There are very different opinions as to what should happen here. And so we have decided at this time not to change the service rules. As you say, today in Squash 57, you get two service, uh, services, unless if your first serve goes out of court, so it hits the tin or goes above the top red line, in which case you won't get a second serve. Um, I think there's a, on the opposing view for this is that it gives, um, it opens up the game to more imagination and creativity by having that, um, I guess, free attempt at your first serve. Uh, it's rarely that we ever see a second serve having to be taken. So, so forcing it to be one serve may not necessarily make much of a change for most people. But thank you very much for uh, the comment. Thank you, Subramanian. I think we have a question from our friend uh, Basut from Iran. Uh, yes, I am. Uh, I want to ask William. Yes. Amir. Amir from. Please go ahead. Okay, Patrick, uh, you know, I, what I can deduce out of this is that, you know, uh, Squash 57 is something, you know, a uh, modified model of Squash in which you are trying to ease the player of all ages to play this game and to promote this game so that, you know, people who are not hardness and not survive hardness of Gosh itself can also play this game. So this is one of the, then to promote 57. Can you hear me? I can. You're you're breaking up a little bit, but I think you're saying that um, Squash 57 is a, is a, eases people into squash. So it's an easier version of squash yeah. and, and people can ease into squash via squash 57. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, that what I see the spirit behind this particular game. Yeah. Yes, and that's a, that's a very interesting observation because um, as as squash 57 has grown and, it, and it's a very, I would say it's a very large sport in the UK and every club is playing it. Um, it's been seen as an exit sport for squash players. Um, it's, that's been a natural um, feeder into the game. So as squash players get older and they can't handle the attrition that they take, you know, the, the bodies take on court, they've migrated to squash 57. And that has extended careers literally by decades. Uh, we have many examples of this in, in the squash 57 world. And, and there are many uh, articles online as well of people who, who use Squash 57 as a, a way for training between their squash games as well. So it allows them to train every day, which they wouldn't be able to do when they're playing squash. So that is how the game has evolved, but that's not how I see it necessarily progressing going forward because it is a very easy game to start. 
And so I think the point that you're making is why aren't or why why can't we be using it for an entry level into squash? And we certainly can. And I think that is the big driver that we're trying to push ahead, uh, push across right now, is if you use squash 57 for your juniors and, and also maybe for lateral moves into the world of squash. So maybe um, people who play contact sports and can't take the knocks anymore. Maybe uh, what we have in the UK is the U3A group, but basically the pensioners group as well. And these people would use the off-peak courts. There's a whole number of demographics that would be very applicable to you to playing this easy to start game. Um, and if you get the juniors playing squash 57, anecdotally, and, and we've spoken to a number of teachers of at schools who also teach squash, they can, they can get about three times more players, more juniors interested in playing squash 57 than they can squash. So if you can imagine, if you could encourage that many juniors into your, onto your courts, some of them will um, convert over to squash and some of them may leave because there isn't necessarily a good pathway for squash 57 into an adult playing game. But you would have attracted so many more players to your club because a lot of them may fall at that first hurdle of picking up a squash racket and a dead squash ball. They've got a much friendlier racket and a friendlier ball to play with and, and the game is fun. Yeah, that I agree. But the other observation is, uh, Patrick, that, you know, uh, while in our elderly people are playing this and those who are in their late 40s and 50s, you know, but however, it will be really a challenging thing to get the youngsters, uh, you know, going into this particular game, especially those who are playing the squash already under 13, under 14, and uh, under 15, sort of. Because, Absolutely. you know, it, it's it's a total diversion as far as the racket, as far as the ball, as far as the bounce. And it may, you know, spoil the habit of the youngsters who are playing squash to play squash 57 also simultaneously. So yeah, there has to be... So I think that's a very, a very good observation. And I don't see people, juniors who are, who are uh, technically capable of playing squash. I think they will play squash. There's a better pathway for squash. There's a better uh, professional career behind squash. So squash 57 is more to attract more juniors in at that very base level. So your six year old, seven year olds, eight year olds, you could attract a much larger group. And that would help you to extract from those or us extract from those the more technically capable and they may be late developers who would otherwise have missed the opportunity and get them into squash and that has a much much uh, greater uh, much better developed pathway and and so i agree with you I, I don't think we would be attracting people away from the squash world as juniors or the, in their 20s i think we would get a larger group onto the squash court uh, as very young juniors and then those people will have, will have their eyes open to Squash 57 for later in life as well. Thank you. Thank you, Amir. I think we have a, a question from uh, Masood from Iran. So I have unmuted you, Masood. So you should be able to speak now. Uh, thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Patrick, uh, my question is what's the duties of the marker of the Squash 57 and if he's going to be silent, so uh, why we are using the marker? Uh, may I ask you to just explain a little bit more for us about this aspect? Many thanks. Um, I, uh, I didn't catch the whole question. It was, it was about the marker and, and being silent, but I didn't catch the whole question. Uh, yeah, 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 you said at the first serve, uh, the marker should be silent, something like this at the item one. Yes. May I ask you to explain more and a little bit about this aspect? Yeah, uh, yes, certainly. So in squash 57, you have two serves. And if you have a, and if I serve, if I'm the server and I serve the ball and the ball doesn't land in the, in the opposing quarter before it hits the back wall, then that is called, that is technically a fault. But if I am the receiver of that faulted first serve, I have the option of playing that ball. So it's almost like if, if I served a tennis serve and it was a bad, you know, it was a feeble second serve as my first serve, I accidentally do that. As the receiver, I can go in and, and hit a winner, right? So it's similarly for squash 57. If that first serve is, is a, a poor one, 
I, as the receiver, can choose to play it. And, and for that reason, the marker should stay quiet. If the marker was to go fault, it would put me off as a receiver. So the marker stays quiet. If I choose not to play it as the receiver and the ball was a fault, then the marker would confirm it was a fault and it would be a second serve. If that serve had not been a fault, so I was mistakenly calling it, a, thinking it was a fault myself as the receiver, then I have lost the point. Does that answer your Sorry. question? Yeah, yeah, thank you very much. It was crystally clear. Thank you. Thank you. So it was crystal clear, Patrick. So you can see the massive interest behind Squash 57 all over the world. So brilliant. I have a mute man suit. So no more questions, David? No, we're all good to move to the next one. Okay, thank you. You deserve a good rest, Patrick. Thank you very much.